Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make a 12 card slider game using Scratch. Uh, the idea of the game is that you click on one of these cards or these tiles and uh, whichever tile you click on it then slides to the next available space. There we go, good stuff. Okie dokie, so let's get started. First thing you need to do is create yourself a new Scratch project. We'll get rid of the Scratch the Cat and what we're going to do is we'll just choose a sprite um, and I'm going to choose the, where's the dog at? Let's have a look. I'll use the dog. You can use any sprite that you want to use um, or you can use any picture that's not even from scratch. It's all fine. I, um, if you're using an image that's not from scratch, then you can either upload the image as a sprite uh, to here and then follow the process from there or just skip this step and start on the next step. Um, which I'll show you in a minute. So so there's my dog and he's pretty much full size. Now in your slider, the empty slide is always going to be the bottom right. So don't put anything there. If you need to move him elsewhere, leave that bottom right empty so that the rest of them are going to be more full of stuff. And once you've done that, then you need to right click and save the image. Good. And that image there has downloaded. Now the uh, the um, let's just get rid of him because we don't need him now. Uh, now the sprite, uh, the scratch stage here is. Let me just show you. If you go down here, um, we're not going to use this, but if we look at that one there, you can see the scratch stage is from minus 240 pixels here to 240 pixels there which is a total of 480 wide and then taut, um, and then vertical it's minus 180 to plus 180 which is 360 vertical so what we want to do is we want to chop up this uh, image into equal pieces based on that but what we'll also do is I'll make them slight make the image slightly smaller than the scratch stage so that you still get this kind of square gap in between each one um, which makes it look a bit more like the classic game that you would get so what we're going to do is we'll go to this image uh, show in folder and at the moment if you look at properties and details you can see it's a bit too big 527 by 396 that's not the size that we want we want it a bit smaller so what I'm just going to use is I'm going to edit it in paint you can use whatever you want resize it and I would resize it but to 480 by 360 which is the um, which is the scratch oops 480 by 360 which is the size of the scratch stage but I'm going to make it four pixels smaller 476 by and we'll just leave that as 357 um, and the reason I'm making that a little bit smaller is so that when we chop it up there will be those little gaps in between so We'll go like that that's now the size i want and then i'll save it which is good so now we've got an image that's the right size 476 by 357 or whatever it is and then we're going to go to a sprite cutting website this is the one i use you can use whatever you want i'll put the link in the video and then if you upload that file and then click upload once that file's uploaded you then need to cut it by the number of columns and rows and we want four columns by three rows and then if we click cut it will then cut it into all of these individual pieces at exactly the right size which is perfect good brilliant so we'll download those frames as a zip which is excellent go back to your downloads uh, and then extract them all to a folder and there we go brilliant we've got all of the tiles that we need including that one there at the, the last one at the end tile 11 that's one we don't want so we're going to delete that one because that's the one tile that's going to be empty good so now what we've got is we've got all our tiles ready to add to our project so we don't need that cutter anymore so we can get rid of that but i'll just leave it in case i've done it wrong and i'll just get rid of that second backdrop so we've got an empty backdrop and now what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new sprite by clicking paint and then we're going to upload all of our costumes here so we just go to upload costumes go into that folder select all of them and then click open 
There we go. Good. And now what it's done is it's done a number of things. Uh, it's uploaded every single one of those tiles in exactly the right order, which is brilliant. So what we now need to do is we just need to sort these out a little bit. Do not click or move the, the sprites from where they are here. Don't touch them. If you do, the whole thing will go wrong and you'll have to start your sprites all over again. But what you do need to do is costume one needs to go to number one. So number two, number three. So rename all of these to match the same as the costume numbers. There we go. Make sure you've got rid of that empty um, empty costume before here at the start. So your number one here should be the tail. Uh, so number so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11. So we should have 11, 11 costumes in total. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Good, that's all perfect. Make sure you don't swap these round. They've got to stay in order, which is why I've labeled them right at the start. So that if you do accidentally drag them around the wrong way, you'll notice that they're numbered wrong, but just don't touch them. Good, so we got one sprite now with 11 costumes. The reason we've not done 11 sprites is because we're gonna have to do a lot of coding on here. And if we change anything in the code with 11 sprites, we'd have to change all 11 bits of code. So we don't wanna do that. Good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it so that it appears in order all the way across, just to ch check and make sure that we have put them in the right order. So we're gonna create a bit of a co uh, code that does that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say, okay, uh, and this sounds a bit odd, actually a bit counterintuitive, but um, when we start, we want to hide this sprite. So when we start, we want to hide. And the reason is, is because this is the master sprite here, um, and we're not gonna be using him, we're only gonna be using the clone sprites. Uh, clones are copies of the main sprite that appear when you tell them to, uh, and they're really, really useful. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to hide, and then we're going to appear in the right place. So how do we know where the right place is? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of positions, and each of the clones, when they appear, we're going to give each one of these, um, each one of the clones, and there's going to be one for each of these costumes. We're going to tell each one of these costumed clones to go to the right position in a list. Now, when we start the game properly, the list is going to be randomized between 1 and 11. So it might go 1, 3, 7, 5, 2 or something, um, so that they'll all appear at the start in random places. But while we're testing it, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get them to appear in order in the right place. And that's really important for debugging when you're first doing your program. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need a list. Here we are. And we're going to need, here we go. So we're going to go to variables, make a list. Good stuff. And we're going to call this positions because this is going to be a list of positions. There we are. So when start clicked, and what we'll do is we'll get rid of all of the positions because we don't want anything in that list. And then temporarily we're going to fill e we're going to fill that list up that's now empty with eleven values. Uh, so let's just repeat eleven times. And what we'll do is uh, let's just create ourselves another variable. Uh, we're going to create another variable called count. Now all this variable count does is it keeps count of a number. It's going to be used for a lot of different things throughout the game, so it's going to be reusable, this count. Um, but in this instance, when we're using it, it's just going to count up to 11. So we'll start at 1, and then each time we'll add whatever, whatever that count is to the positions, and then we'll change the count by 1. Uh, so now this should populate us with a list of 11 numbers. 1, 2, 3, there you go, perfect. And if you notice, they're all in the correct order this time around. We are going to change this code later so that it does something a little bit more special. Um, we're going to change that later um, so that it randomizes it. Otherwise, it's, your game will be 
really easy because it'll just start as it should be. But for the moment, we're just going to keep it like that. So there's our positions list, and we'll just hide that at the moment. And there's our count, so we'll just hide that as well at the moment. We don't need to see those. So now what we're going to do is, once that's done, we've got the counts, then we're just going to wait a little while uh, while things get set up. So we'll just wait 0.1 seconds. There we go. Good stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create some, uh, some clones of ourself. And... Oops, let's just get rid of that. And at the moment, it's pretty much going to do exactly the same thing as the one above. So we'll start again, set the count to one. And this time, what we're going to do, though, is... We'll leave that there a minute. We're not going to add to positions. Um, we are going to... We are going to wait a little while inside of that loop this time around. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a clone of ourselves. So create a clone of myself. Let's have a look. There we go. And so we'll create a clone. Just wait a little while because that clone's going to do a bit of setup. And then we'll go back through the list. So this point here should create 11 co clones of, um, of ourself. And more importantly, is not only are we creating 11 clones, but we're keeping count here of which clone we're on um, by counting up so that we know which costume to switch it to. So, okie dokie, so we've done that now, we've got that set up, we can leave that bit of code for the moment, we will change that later, but now what we're going to do is we're going to get our sprite to appear, and this actually is quite easy. First thing we do is we show the sprite, because he's ready to go, so once we start as a clone, we show, uh, then we switch our costume to whatever the count is. So that we have, as we're going through the clones list, we'll end up with 11, um, 11 different um, costumes. Good. There we go. So we've done that. Uh, then what we need to do is we set a, um, a position of this sprite. And this is a special. When you go to make a variable, this is the position of this particular sprite. So we call this my position because it's only for that sprite. And make sure you tick this box. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. Uh, it'll do weird and wonderful things and you'll get very upset. And what we do here now is we say, okay, let's set my position to, and here is the clever thing. We go to this count and we find, uh, let's have a look, item, this one here, item count oh, of positions. So we set my position to item count of positions. There we go. So effectively, uh, this list of positions at the moment, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, 11, because we're not doing that last one. Uh, and that will tell it what position this clone is going to start in. Good. Uh, now we've done that. We've done all the hard work. All we've got to do now is move our cloned sprite to the right position. Because if we click on Start, you can see it's creating all of these clones, but they're not moving to the right place. Um, they're just sitting there. So that's no good. So we need to get them to appear in the right place. And the way we do that is we create two more variables. Okay. And for this sprite only again, make sure it's only for that sprite. Otherwise, again, it will all go wrong. And one of them is called X. Uh, in fact, we'll call it my X because it's only for that sprite. Uh, and that's going to be that sprite's X position. And make another variable, my Y only for the sprite, I almost forgot to click on that then. There we go. And we're gonna set these positions to their X and Y position in that grid. Now it's important to note that this X and the Y is, we're not talking about Scratch's main X and Y position, um, which is a little bit different. We're just talking about in terms of um, coordinates from this top left going along and down in our grid position. So it'll go, one 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 two one up oh, no one comma one because it's x and y so one one two one three one four one one two 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 three two four two in fact i'll show you that in, sa in a second actually i'll show you i'll get them to say their position and we can show that being debugged we don't need to see these we can hide those we don't need to see my position 
but we're going to set these to their right place. So how do we do that? Well, what we do here is we need to work out a way of making it so that if I give it position 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it knows that actually position 6 is x, 1, 2, y, 1, 2. So it would be 2, 2. How do we do that? Well, we use a little bit of these operator blocks here. Uh, and we use two clever things. We use modulus and we use uh, one that's called floor. So modulus is what we're going to use to work out the x value. Floor is what we're going to use to work out the y value. Now what we've been given is we've been given a um, position between 1 and 11 and from that position we need to work out what his x coordinate is. So let's say we were given position 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. His x position is going to be 1 and his y position is going to be one, uh, 2. So we need to work out his x position uh, and we need to use mo uh, mod and mod is a really really cool thing. And let me show you what happens when we do this. If we take uh, if we just set up mod like that and we do uh, whoops put that in there sorry so it's going to be a num the our position number here like that 1 to 11 minus 1 uh, and then we're going to do it modulus 4 the reason we're doing mod 4 is because we've got um, four columns so the x goes in four so it goes 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and but it just does it zero so we need to add one to it and what this does now is let me show you if we put one in here then it needs to say uh, so if our position is one his x position is always is one as well and it should say one and then if we put two in there two yep yeah, should go to here and now if we put three it should say three good and now if we put four it should say four hopefully there we go. Now the clever thing here is where when we get to 5, because our x position should go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then our x should go back to 1, modulus brings it back to 1. So that will keep going up. It'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So our x coordinate is going to be all of that, but we need my position. Uh, my position. There we go. And then the y coordinate is going to be a similar thing. Uh, so we use floor. And this one is what we do is we take my position minus 1. Similar thing again. Uh, my position minus 1. Floor is a division. Um, uh, a, is a um, So it's not a division. Sorry, let's have a look. Is If you do floor of 2.5 it'll just get rid of the 0.5 and it'll just say 2. So it's whatever number it is um, with, without any decimal, just get rid of the decimal bits at the end. You can see that. Good. So what we do now is we do my position minus 1 and then you divide that by 4. And this now, my position minus 1 divided by 4 because again there's 4 columns across and then put that into the floor and what that will now tell you oh hang on and then we add one to the end of it as well because because it needs to be it gives you a zero index what this now will do um just like that is let me show you what it will do actually if we put we'll not put hello this is how by the way this is how i debugged it when i was actually practicing the program um i just went x equals y equals and then I got these two here. Let me just show you this magic. Why we're doing all this. There we are. Because now. Oops. Da, da, da. Why is that not gone? Oh, we've not moved him. That's why. Okay, we're almost there. The final thing that we haven't actually done, although we've set up our grid and we've got it working, I promise you it's working, you'll see that in a second, is now we need to move our characters to the right place. And this again just involves one more of these operators and we need to work out, if I give you an X across of one, we need to work out how far across this the uh, scratch stage we need to go. Uh, and the equation for that is, um, or the calculation for that is nice and simple. 
Uh, we're starting right at the left, so we've got to do minus 180. Uh, the reason we don't do minus 240 and start here is because our sprites, each sprite is actually 80 by 80, um, or thereabouts, 80 by 80 pixels. So we, if we started him right over there, he'd be halfway off the end. So we just take off a bit. Um, it's not 80 by 80, it's 120 by 120. Um, so we take off half his width so he doesn't go that far across. Uh, and then what we do is we take our X grid position. Where's our my X? And there we go. Uh, uh, uh. And we take my X minus one. Do, do, do. My X minus one. And we do that one, my X minus one, times by 120. And the reason being is that each tile is 120 across. And then we stick those together like that. And what this will do is it will say if your X position is um, if your X position is one on your X X Y grid, then we're going to go 180. Do this multiplication there. And it will know to space them out at those four spaces. Let me just show you how that works. That looks like that. My x minus one. Y is the same, except that we do uh, 120. The reason we do 120 here is um, oh, in fact, slightly different because we're starting at the top and working our way down. Uh, that's the way I'm going to do this grid rather than starting from the bottom because it makes it easier. So we do 120, which is uh, towards the top, and then my not y coordinate, but our y. There we are, my y. This is about as hard as it gets, by the way. Um, there we go. Good. So, oops. Hey. Oh, it did work. That's why. Let me just swap these around there so that it moves them before they start talking. There you go. And that is what it looks like. Here we go. So, there we go. Oh, that's okay. What we'll do as well is we'll just put a bit of a weight here in this clone bit here. I'm going to change that weight to five seconds so that you can see this in action. So, x1, y1. It should say x2, y2. In fact, that's taken ages. Let's do it. 2.2 seconds or something. It's going to be here till tomorrow. So x1, y1, x2, y1, x3, y1, x4, y1. And now, there you go. You can see his x has gone back to 1, but his y position in, in the grid has gone up by 1. There we go. x1, x2, y3, x3, y3. And there you go. So now you've got all of your pieces in the correct position, ready to go. Uh, and once you've done that, and it's all working, and they're all in the right position, and that's perfect, what you then need to do is we're then going to add the bits in our program where instead of just doing a normal list where it's uh, they all appear in order, what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle them so they start in random places. So how do we shuffle them? Well, that's nice and simple. But all we need to do is we just need to change this bit of code here. And that bit needs to be replaced with some code that instead of producing a, uh, a list of positions in order, it produces a random list. So how do we do that? Well... Let's just move these out of the way at the moment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of the repeat and the count because we're not going to be counting a set number of times this time. And instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat uh, until. And what we're going to repeat until is until this list is full with 11 numbers, 11 random numbers. And they've got to be all numbers one from 11, but they've got to be in a random order. So it's got to be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, but in a random order. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is you say, okay, we're going to repeat until the length of this list, uh, which is length of positions, is 11. There we go. 
And the reason we do that is because we know that once it's got 11 items in the list, there's only 11 numbers, it must be ready to go. So, and what we need to do is we need to choose a random number, make sure it's not already in the list because we only want each number to appear once. If it's not in the list, add it to the list and then keep going and keep doing that. If it is in the list, then we just ignore it and we just pick again. So we create ourselves a variable and call this uh, random chosen. There we go, random chosen. And what we do is we set the random chosen, uh, random chosen to, and we pick a number between one and 11. Good, there we go. Pick a number between one and 11. There we go. Uh, if that number is, um, there we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, in fact, actually, you, know, you can pick it between 1 and 12 because it doesn't really matter where it appears in that list, actually. Um, so it doesn't really matter. So what we can do here is pick a random position between 1 and 12. If that's not in the list, so we could do an if, if not, oh, put that inside of there. If not, uh, let's have a look. Uh, and then we need to go to contains. There we go. If not condition, uh, if not positions contains that random chosen, where's my random chosen? So if it doesn't contain the random chosen thing, then we add it. We add random chosen thing to the list. There we go to positions. So let's put that back in there. Let's get rid of all that. So now what we should end up with is delete all the positions uh, and then repeat until that length is there keep going through duh, 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 and then put themselves in a random position let's have a look let's see if that works there we go do 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 yeah that's working now good let's just hide that and let's hide random chosen because we don't really need to see that so now it is placing all of our blocks in the right place and it's saying their position uh there we go but we'll just put that back to 0.1 because we don't need a massive weight now there you go. Brilliant. So now we've got a grid that displays random, uh, places our, our little slides in random positions. So we're getting there. We're probably about, hmm, about halfway there now. So we've done that now. Uh, we've got them placed in a random position. So the next thing to do is to get them to move from place to place. Now, uh, this bit's not too hard if you follow along. Um, the only problem you have is we need to include some way of stopping it so that if you click on a slide, if you click on two of them at the same time, it doesn't try and move both. Um, and the way we do that is we have a little, um, a little flag variable called um, sprite clicked. And what this does is uh, as soon as a sprite is clicked, then it sets this flag to true to say, yes, I've been clicked. And then it disables uh, any other sprite from being clicked. So set sprite. Now at the start of the game, we want to set sprite click to false because otherwise you'll never be able to click on a sprite. But then what you want to say is, okay, okay. When this sprite is clicked, uh, let's have a look. Um, when this sprite is clicked, there we go. When this sprite is clicked, if another sprite's already been clicked, so uh, if um, if it's already been clicked, we don't do anything or we do very little. But if it's not been clicked, then the first thing we do is set the false flag to true. And this means that none of the other sprites will be able to do anything while this is doing stuff. Um, it's just a useful little trick. So what we do is if sprite clicked equals false. Um, so if no other sprite's been clicked, then the first thing we do do is set sprite clicked to true. And that means that if any other sprite gets clicked, when they get to this piece of code in themselves, they just get blocked here and they can't do all of the next bit, which is the bit about moving from place to place. Good. Okie dokie. So when it's, let's imagine that none of the other sprites have been clicked. We click this code here. What do we want to happen? Well, first thing we want to do here is um, we need to find out where we are. Okay. Um, so we need two more variables here. And this has got to be available for all sprites because another sprite, another 
temporary worker sprite is going to use this. Um, so clicked sprite stage X. There we go. Click sprite stage X. Uh, we're calling it click sprite stage X. There we go. And we also need another one called click sprite clicked sprite stage Y. Uh, I'm calling it stage X and stage Y because these ones are the actual X and Y positions from like minus 240 to 240 to up there to down there. Um, the reason being is um, we're going to tell another sprite to move to their location and do a bit of checking. Otherwise, we'll start moving these sprites and it'll all go wrong. So what we do is we tell we fill these variables here up with the x position and the y position make sure x goes to x and y goes to y otherwise it'll all go wrong and at this point here once we've got all this set up then we broadcast a message to the other sprite that we haven't created yet saying please go and check to see which um, slide is empty nearest to me check empty good so broadcast check empty good uh, and then what we do is we just wait a tiny amount of time and then we're going to go off. Once um, this other sprite has checked to see what, what position is empty, we then go off and we move to the right location. But we don't know which way we can move. We can either move up, down, left or right, depending on what is empty. So the other sprite, which we haven't done yet, is going to go find out. Um, let's just hide these so we, got, so we don't have to see all these. Good stuff. So sprite clicked check empty so which sprite is going to do it well here we go we're going to create a, a sprite here and all we're going to do for the moment is just create our sprite with a dot you could do it in any color you like but i'm just doing a purple dot because it's quite easy for me to um check uh, to see and make sure it's doing the right thing and i'm going to put it between the crosshairs which means it always appears exactly in the center of a sprite and that's really uh, really important uh try again Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to code and we're going to code this little little helper sprite to go off and check. So effectively what's going to happen is let's say, um, oh, where's he gone? My little helper sprite is here. Uh, let's say we click on this sprite here. This sprite needs to go and check here, here, here. Doesn't actually need to check here, but we're going to go and check up there as well. Um, so we're going to check those locations. If any of those locations doesn't contain a, a sprite, then we'll, uh, we'll let everything know that that's what's going to happen. So what do we do? Well, nice and simple. Uh, this particular helper sprite, uh, when I receive check empty, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to show. Obviously, we don't want this purple dot to appear on our game the entire time. So at the start of the game, it's going to hide. There we go. So when we receive check empty, it's going to show. Uh, we're just going to wait a tiny amount of time uh, just to let um, all the other bits, um, basically it's to let, uh, give this sprite enough time to populate these positions here. Otherwise it might go a bit wrong. So to populate those variables. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wait a tiny amount of time and then the direction that we're able to move at the moment we don't know move direction make sure this is available for all sprites we don't know which direction we're going to be able to move in so at the moment we'll set that to empty and just delete that good so we don't know which one we're going to go to uh, whether it's um, which direction is available she said it's empty and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to each four corners relative to that uh, the one that's just been clicked and then we're going to go and check each of those four corners. So let's go to the um, let's go to the left of the sprite first of all. So we're going to move, and we're going to go to oops, wrong one. We're going to we're going to go to here. We're going to go to the left. So in order to find out if it's on the left, what we do is we use this variable of the click sprite uh, stage X. So we take whatever x the sprite was at, and we're going to go to the left of it. So, and we're going to go 120 left, which is exactly one square left. So we're going to go to the left of it by one, and we're going to leave the um, 
the sprite Y to be the same as the, uh, the this clicked sprite Y. So we're not changing the Y position because the up and down hasn't changed. We're just moving to the left about here. If this one was a click, move to there. And we're going to see if it's empty. And the way we see if it's empty is we say, okay, uh, if it's not touching, there we are, if not touching uh, sprite one. And the good news is, is that because sprite one contains loads of clones, that actually will tell us if it's touching sprite one or any of its clones, which means it'll see if it's touching any of those. So if it's not touching that, then, uh, and that dot has moved to here and it's not touching another tile, then we know that tile space is empty, so we can set the move direction to left. And we know that we can move left. There we go. And then what we do is, there we go, we carry on doing exactly the same thing like that, but we do that for each of the directions in turn. So we've moved left. Now what we'll do is we're going to move right. So we can do plus 120 instead. So click stage plus 120 and, that, uh, and put that in the X coordinate. Again, leave the Y the same because we're going across left and right. And then if that's empty, we, we know we can move right. Uh, and we just keep going. So duplicate that again. Uh, this time what we'll do is we'll swap them around. The X is going to stay the same. The, right, the Y is going to be... Um, minus 120 so we'll do minus instead of 100 minus instead of plus there we go minus 120 because we're going to check above and that will be up and then the final one here is we're going to check down so that will be plus 120 there we go I'll get rid of that and that's going to be down good so Hopefully now, if we run that there, if I click on this sprite here, see there what it's done there is actually really quickly checked all four directions and it's worked out that the empty one is to the left of the one I just clicked. There we go. It won't work now on any of them because here, if you remember, uh, da, 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 in our... Um, in our script, after we've checked the empty and after we've moved, we also need to um, set the sprite clicked to false. So to reset it. So how do we do that? Well, nice and simple. We'll do that in a minute. But let me just show you first. In fact, no, let's do that now. Set, there we are. Sprite clicked to false. Good. Excellent. Put it inside of that. It's inside of this when sprite click thing. So now if we run it again, it should. There you go. Down. Oh, well, it's not done down. That's done left. That's done right. That's done down, which means that's wrong. Right. Left is right down. I wonder if, if I refresh this, I would have done up and down wrong. Up. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Good. I can live with that if I've done my up and down wrong. Why have I done that? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh yeah, if it's gone above it, it's empty. so we'll just swap those round. Uh, there we go. Da -da 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 -da. Down, up. Eee, let's try that again. So right, yes it can move right, yes it can move left, yes it can move up, yes it can move down, there you go. I don't know why they've done those the wrong way around, but never mind. Um, there you go. So, yeah. So now, left, that can move right, that can move left. This one, if I click on that, should not be able to move at all. Any of those shouldn't be able to move, and that should be able to move right. Good. So now they know, when you click on them, we know where they can move. So now all we need to do is say to them, okay, let's get moving. So how do we move them? Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to change their intended position, uh, their X and Y coordinate. Um, so how does that work? Well, that's nice and simple. Um, now this time we're changing their X. So let's say he's here, which is his X number two, because X is one. And let's say there's an empty space here. If we click on him, he's on number two, his X needs to go to one. Uh, same as if it was here, we need to go there, then his X needs to go up by one. So that needs to go down by one, up by one. 
uh, a little bit different here. Um, in fact, no, it's not exactly the same. But this time, if you click here, he needs to go up, but his Y needs to go up. Uh, well, actually, he needs to go down by one because that's 11 and that's 7, isn't it? So it needs to go up. Oh, if that's Y, sorry, that's 3. Because that's Y1, Y2, Y3. So actually, if, I, if he needs to go up, his Y needs to go down. But we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, it'll be pretty obvious if you've got it wrong because when you do it, all your slides will start moving in the wrong place. So let's get this set. So what are we going to do? Well, let's start with the easy one. Uh, 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 uh. So if is move direction equals up. So if the move direction available is up, uh, move direction, if the move direction available is up, then we need to change his Y position by minus one, because that changes his Y, his y coordinate by minus one. Uh, change y my y uh, nope. my y uh, change my y by minus one there we go and we just duplicate that if my direction is down we change it my y by plus one uh, if my move direction is left make sure all of these go inside of this other if statement inside of this main if statement uh, left now this time we're changing my x because moving left means you're changing the x and that's going to be minus one and then move direction right and that's going to be plus one yeah just one there you go so now we do all that good um so we've we're going to move we're going to change his coordinates which is good and then what we're going to do is we're going to also need to change his position in the grid. So if he moves from here, which is at position 8, and moves to position 7, then what we need to do is we need to calculate his new 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 from these coordinates here. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is just to do uh, set my position. Uh, and what we can do is we can just calculate it. Um, based on the number of uh, x and y's that he's moved. And it works out at the equation is, uh, the calculation is my y position minus 1, because we need to get it down to 0 indexed, multiplied by 4. Because if his y position is here, is, is, if his y position here is 1, because it's 1, 2, 3, then you're not adding any more, it's just going to be the x. But if it's here, then you need to add 1, 2, 3, 4 onto whatever his x value is. So we do my y minus 1 times 4, and then add on his x value. Add on his x plus his x value. Uh, my x. There we go. Set my position. So now I'll do that. I'm going to get the check that in a minute. We'll get him to say his position when he moves in a minute. Uh, there we go. And then what we do is finally we glide him to his new position, which is how we get that smooth move. Um, so glide him to his new position. Um, now what we do is we put the glide outside of this if statement. And the reason we do that is because if someone double clicks on this sprite, it cancels this block and it redoes it so that if he was halfway through moving, he'd just stop. And we don't want to do that. We want him to keep gliding to the position where he should have gone to. So the way we do that is we're going to glide one second to, and now we need to work out from his X and his Y position where he needs to glide to. Well, what we'll do here is actually we'll just duplicate that, uh, drag him down here, and we'll drag this one out of here and that one out of there. Oops. But make sure it goes in the right space. Hey, good. So basically, we're just using the green blocks here out of this go-to. Because we want it to go to, but we don't want it to go super duper quickly. Um, there we go. And then finally, after we've done that, is we'll set... Um, after all that's happened, we'll set sprite clicked to false. Oh, but not there. Why have I done that sprite clicked? It was false there. Oh, no, 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 no. Leave him back. Let's get rid of that one. Delete that block. And we'll put him down here at the end. Set sprite clicked to false. There we go. So now, hopefully, if we run, 
and if we click on it, hey, there you go. He'll move to his right position. And what we'll also do is I'll just check. What I'll do is I'll get him to say, at the end of all that, I'll just get him to say his position, his my position. And let's make sure um, that that's right. So let's start again. So at the moment he's on position, let's say he's moving here, so he's on position one, two, three, four, five, five, and he needs to go to five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, and he should go back to five. Hey, good. The reason we need to know these positions is because at the end of the game, when you've got it all right, we want it to freeze and say game over. And the only way you can know that is by checking that he's in the right position. Um, and we'll talk about in a minute about how we can do that. So there you go. So now what we've got here is, there you go, good. That's all working. We can get rid of that now that we know it's all right. Um, that Once we've done all that there, what we're then going to do is we're then going to need to check to see if we've um, if won. But if you notice this purple spot still there, and the reason being is on the purple spot, after he's done all this checking, just hide him again. So now, whee, once he's checked, there you go. You can add this. In fact, you probably won't even see him. You don't see the purple spot appearing now that you don't need him. There you go. Good. So once we've moved, after each time we've moved, in fact, if I double click it as well, you can see now, there you go, he still moves. And if I click two at the same time, it won't let me move him. So it stopped that from happening. Uh, it stops the game glitching out. So we're almost there now. Uh, now what we need to do is the final thing is we just need to check to see if we've won. So what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast um, check win. New message. Check if won there we go check to see if we've won which is good um and what do we do if when we check to see if we won well it's actually nice and simple what we do is we count up how many of these slides are in the right place uh which is good so in order to do that we can use the um if i will create a new variable and call it win count win count and what we'll do is there we are, uh, win count. We will, one that's clicked, set the win count, uh, win count, win count, win count to zero. There we go. Do that just before the broadcast. So set the win count to zero and then broadcast check if one. And then what we do is we say, okay, when I receive check to see if we've won, uh, when I receive check if one, what we do is we see if he's in the right position. So how do we know if he's in the right position? Well, actually, it's really easy because we say if his position, my position, so if my position, which is his current position, which we found out then, is the same as the correct position, well, how do we know the correct position? Well... If you remember right back at the start of the game, I made you name all of these and put them in the right order. Costume number one should go in position one. Costume two, position two. So all we need to do is check that his current position matches his costume number. There you go. So if my position is the same as my costume number, then we give a quick vote. Uh, and we change the uh, win count by one. There you go. So we just add on a little bit of the win count. So the idea being is if that win count goes all the way up to 11, we know that we've won. Well, who's going to keep count of the win count? Well, the stage is going to keep count. So, in fact, no, not the stage. Actually, no, what we'll do is we're going to create a new sprite, and we're going to paint, and this is going to be the win screen sprite. So... Uh, win, do, 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 do. what we do is we go, let's create a new costume and let's put you win, you win, there we go, so you win there, and so do it to marker, you win, there we go, now this is our sprite for the win sprites and he's going to appear there, you can change him to however you want, um, you can even colour in the backdrop if you want to so that it, um, uh, makes it look nice and pretty. Uh, maybe we can do an outline on that. Let's do a nice, yeah, that'll do one. It's nice that stands out a bit more. You can change it to however you want. 
So this particular you win costume, uh, again, it's only going to win at the end. So at the start of the game, we'll hide. Uh, we're probably going to need to show them at some point, but only if they've won. And what we do now is we say, OK, when I receive check if one, we're going to wait a little bit of time, just like 0.2 of a second, because we've got to wait for all of these other sprites to count up and see if they're in the right position. And then we say, okie dokie, if, um, there we go, if the win count equals 11, there we go, if the win count equals 11, there we go, then what we do is we show, which will show that sprite there, and again, you can make it stand out a bit more. If the win count equals 11, we show, uh, and then what we do is we broadcast a um, another event, and this is called Game Over. There we go. Let's do a new message. Game Over. Good. Broadcast Game Over. And what do we want to happen when it's Game Over? Well, uh, there you go. In fact, Broadcast Game Over. And what we'll do, just to be sure, is we'll wait 0 0.2 seconds or something because uh, we need to do something else. Wait 0 0.2 seconds, and then we'll stop all scripts, just in case anything else is running at the time. Uh, stop all scripts. Um, now, what do the other sprites need to do when we get game over? Well, these sprites here, we want them to stop being clickable. Um, and we need to stop all those from being clickable. Now we could change the variable clickable to true and all those sorts of things, but it might get a bit buggy. Uh, and there's an even easier way of doing it. And that's just instead to destroy all of the sprites because then there's nothing to click on. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we say, okay, uh, when I receive game over, what we do is before we destroy myself, because we still want to appear as if we're still here, we draw with your sprites and we do um, stamp. And that will stamp a copy of myself onto the onto the stage so that it'll look like I'm still there. And then just delete this clone. Delete this clone, which is good. Um, so that's perfect. And that will work for all of those sprites. Probably then, um, yeah, probably a good idea actually here when start clicked also to erase all right at the start of the game just in case there's some um some stamps left over from the previous game i don't think that will i don't think that will happen um but we'll find out we'll find out okay okay so there you go uh now all we need to do is make sure that works so we'll just get rid of those uh and then that should if i move them around there we go it should then move them all into the right position. I'm going to pause the video because this is going to take a little while for me to work it out um, to make sure it is actually working. So I'm going to pause the video and then I'll restart it in about two minutes or ten when I've figured it out. Let's see. Okay, that's going to take me ages to test. So instead what I'll do is, what we'll do is we'll just put a bit of code in here temporarily that when we press start, it almost finishes it rather than completely finishes it. So what we'll do here is we'll just delete all the positions. And then what we'll do is we will grab all of these here and we'll just put them in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can get rid of this code in a minute. Eight, there we are, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, and then we'll do 12 so that it's putting it almost in the right position. There you go. And we'll put that code um, just there temporarily so that now, just while we're debugging it and making sure it's working, it almost puts it right. And now if we go here, win count 9, win count 10. There we are. Let's just swap these rounds. Just make sure, yeah, that's going. Can you see here the wind counts constantly? I've ticked that back on to make sure it's all right. Nine, ten, eleven. There you go. And now the wind count is eleven. I just changed the wind count to twelve before. Let's put that back. I was just debugging it because something was going a bit weird. 
Uh, let's try again. So if I move that there, 9, 10, 11. There you go. You win. Good. Game over. Okie dokie. So now that I know that's working, I've tried that out. All I then need to do is just come along here and get rid of this extra code, this temporary code. I'm going to put it down there for the moment just in case any more bugs come in. There we go. And there we go. Done. Okie dokie. So um, there's the full tutorial. What I will do is I'll put all of the code on Learn Learn as always. Uh, so if you're struggling, if you've got any problems, uh, it's a longer project. So you're going to need to make sure you debug it as you go along. I'm sure you find a few bits and bats uh, where you've not quite copied it right or you need to have a look at it. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. Uh, if you did like the video, then please look, like and subscribe. Uh, and uh, I'll see you later. Thank you.